We own and operate assets, about 75,000 miles of pipelines and 180 plus terminals around North America. These assets produce large amounts of cash flow and our primary goal is to grow that cash flow and distribute it to our unit holders at KMP and EPB and to our shareholders at KMI. Another very strange uh, uh, hookup to this whole thing is the reversal of coaching, which is actually in the end, we believe, going to be used to move Diluent, uh, processed out of the condensate coming out of the Eagleford and moved all the way back up into uh, Alberta. Uh, again, we've made no secret of the fact that the great upside there is not uh, California demand, uh, but uh, the ability to drop off vibes along the way. Uh, particularly in New Mexico. And we talk about the Sasabi project, which is a $200 million plus project, uh, which would hook into additional volumes uh, that would be picked up on a brand new pipeline uh, being built by other parties uh, down in Mexico. We would hook, at the, hook up at the border near Sasabi, uh, Arizona. So uh, just a lot of potential to drop more volumes off. And when you do that, we believe we will end up with more than one lateral going down there. And when that happens, uh, you uh, you have two things. You earn on the money you've spent on those laterals, plus you are filling some of the capacity that is now not being utilized uh, to ship uh, uh, gas to California. Uh, the other thing is that uh, we continue to look at the potential to use portions of that system uh, uh, to convert it to, uh, uh, to other uh, uses, perhaps uh, moving crude oil west from the Permian Basin. Uh, I'm wondering in terms of... Um after the El Paso acquisition, um, some of the assets you acquired are including Elba Island and um, the Gulf LNG facility. I'm wondering, given the significant interest uh, in terms of potential liquefaction and export of um, natural gas and um, some of the um, controversies about, around that, can you talk a little bit about how you're viewing those assets in terms of their uh, potential for you over the next few years and maybe some of the competitive advantages or or challenges uh, those facilities or those sites may have compared to uh, some of the other players who have already uh, have already um, got agreements or have been working fairly aggressively in the um, in the uh, queue at um, at FERC. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, we believe that both of those terminals uh, uh, are have very great potential to be utilized uh, for LNG export. Uh, in both cases, we have uh, a DOE approval on the uh, uh, FTA volumes. Uh, no one knows for sure what's going to happen on the non-FTA. Uh, we believe we will be able to put together uh, a project at ELBA uh, that will be uh, non-FTA and then it will have some optionality to expand uh, if and when we got FTA. Uh, on the Gulf, we think much the same thing. We think we will be able to do something, although it's a little more preliminary than, uh, than our efforts on uh, Elba. Uh, we think there's a good chance we can do something there that, again, would have maybe one train on, a not, on an FTA, uh, and then uh, we'd have to wait to, to get larger to see uh, whether uh, we got approval from DOE on a non-FTA. Uh, our uh, whole process in this is very conservative, I think. Uh, we don't want to uh, spend a lot of money cranking up uh, uh, based on uh, getting non-FTA approval, so we're uh, working very hard to secure commitments that uh, uh, are binding uh, even without non-FTA approval. And so the whole projects uh, would be constructed that way. And uh, if you get uh, non-FTA approval, there'd be upside. But uh, we want base projects that will stand on their own based on FTA, uh, which we have in uh, both instances. So we think both of them have potential. We're not prepared to announce anything right now, but uh, we think uh, we will be prepared to uh, to give more detail on that in the not too distant future. Hi. Uh, How are you, Craig? Great. Thanks. Uh, so, quick follow-up first on Badula's question. I think you said, uh, Rich, that uh, you were thinking maybe, maybe uh, you could do uh, a half BCF a day uh, single train at Gulf and LNG with um, FTA, uh, uh, you know, binding commitments. What were you thinking about size and potential online date for ELBA? 
Well, first of all, I don't think I said, uh, uh, I think I just said an LNG train. I didn't mention the specific uh, uh, amount of uh, gas throughput there, but we think uh, that the potential at Gulf is to put together uh, uh, one train of, uh, uh, of uh, FTA. Uh, at Elba, uh, Tom, you want to comment on that? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, we're looking at uh, uh, potentially somewhere in the neighborhood of three to 400,000 a day and in the 2015-2016 time frame. I'm really interested about this comment you made about converting the EPNG from gas to crude. Maybe you can just talk a little bit more about uh, how much oil you might be able to move out of the Permian. Would you be moving, just converting portion of the EPNG, the whole thing? Um, talk about maybe how much capital it would take to do that. Well, first of all, I want to emphasize again, this is very early. Uh, you know, I was responding to a question of what are the upside opportunities on EPNG. It's very early in the game. Uh, but uh, we, we would not be converting all of it. We would still, if we did it at all, be able to service all of our gas customers at the present level of demand or whatever throughput uh, uh, they want to sign up for, a level of throughput they want to sign up for, and still convert. We have multiple lines across there, mm -hmm. and still convert a line all the way from the Permian into uh, uh, Southern California. Uh, you know, uh, the volumes could be uh, very substantial, maybe three or 400,000 barrels a day, and uh, the uh, effort to or the opportunity to deploy capital could be up to around $2 billion on that. Uh, I know I've said it till I'm blue in the face, and you guys are probably tired of hearing it, but you cannot overemphasize the power of the footprint that we now have in North America, and we are going to drive that footprint uh, as hard as we possibly can only when the projects make sense uh, uh, on, uh, uh, on an economic basis. But we're going to take advantage of that footprint to continue to get uh, additional projects uh, in the front door.